What's up everyone, Vu of Envo Films, back with another video. And today, I am a D-Bag YouTube vlogger. Because currently, I am using the new DJI Action 4. As all of you may know, my channel is trash. So I don't get free stuff from DJI to play around with and review. I actually bought this combo myself, just as I bought the DJI Action 4 myself, just as I bought the DJI Mini 4 Pro by myself. And the reason why I mention all three of these things is because DJI is absolutely killing the game right now with everything they release. Obviously this DJI Pocket 3 is legitimate. I'm talking about you have a one inch sensor, you have 4K, 24, 30, 60, 4K, 120, with that 10 bit 420 with D log. And I'm telling you, DJI's D is the size of a log, especially when you're comparing it to Sony. Look, I'm a Sony fanboy D-bag all of my life, pretty much. You know, aside from this DJI pocket right here, I am a Sony user, FX3, A7S3, A7IV, ZV1, the whole nine yards. But in terms of the one inch sensor space, all this time, Sony has had the Sony ZVE series, Sony RX100 series. You have poor battery life, you have overheating issues, you have bad st stabilization, you have no 10 bit, no 4K60, and DJI just like that bought 10 bit 420, 4K60, 4K120 directly onto this one inch sensor. And right now it is on face track, meaning it's not just tracking my face with autofocus, it is tracking my face entirely, regardless of how I turn the gimbal it's tracking my face with the gimbal as well, which is incredible. So right now I am back outside where mother nature is showing me that I am truly Asian due to the lack of girth in my pants. With this breezy, cold 30 degree temperatures. But uh, yeah, here to just demonstrate some tracking, as you can see, I'm walking over here and the camera will pan with me. And I'm walking over here, the camera will pan with me over here and I should be still in the shot. Now, it does have its limitations. It stops at a certain point because of, you know, the gimbal can't turn a full 360 degrees, but then when I come back in the frame, it finds me again. So this is a very legit tracking device, it looks like. So I'll walk over here. So that's just a quick demonstration of face tracking. Now that's not the only type of tracking that this camera has. The face tracking basically tries to keep me in the center of the frame as it follows me around. Now, if you want to be a more creative piece of trash, you can, let me just take off this 15 millimeter lens. Right now I'm on 20 millimeter lens standard. And if I set this, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to track a specific part of the frame. You pretty much have nine points that you could pick, rule of thirds, the bottom rule of thirds, wherever, and it will track you accordingly wherever you want it to track. So now if I want to track myself on the left third of the frame, I just select the area with the joystick. I select myself and I hit the joystick button. Now it's tracking me, but I will always be on that left third of the frame, which is absolutely sick. And then if I want myself to be on the bottom left third i could select or the bottom right third i'm going to select the bottom right third i'm going to move myself over to that part i'm going to select myself to be tracked now it's locked into me at the bottom left right of the frame your right of the frame whatever but as you can see it'll always try to keep me on that same spot of the frame so, yo, this is, this is some legit stuff DJI got working on. So now I'm just have it back on regular face tracking you know, in the middle, but pretty much Sony could do tracking on like their whole sensor, right? It would just track the sensor, not like a gimbal that moves with you. So you end up losing some image quality because it has to crop into the image to follow you around this wide angle image. Now this is actually live tracking with a gimbal using the full sensor of the camera. So the question I have with the DJI Pocket 3, is it 
suitable for professional use. Of course, it's suitable for professional use. All you need is a professional to use it. So if, if, if someone has a phone and they could get paid to film with the phone, that's a professional camera. So the DJI Pocket 3 is no doubt a professional camera. Now, why do I consider it a professional camera and what kind of use will I get out of it? Pretty much it could be used as multiple different things. With the ability to track, I could use it as a BTS camera. With the ability to do 10-bit 420, I could match it up with my Sony S-Log3 footage. For corporate shoots, wedding shoots, events, I could set it up as a camera in the back because it's very stable. It has good battery life with the battery uh, attachment as well. So it will last the entirety of the events. You could also connect a battery to it and it will run off the battery. So you could have it sitting there as a safety cam since it is a 20 millimeter lens standard. It also has a 15 millimeter equivalent um, lens attachment that you could do. And I'll do that right now. You could also check the dynamic range as the sun is getting super bright. But this is what it looks like with 20 mil. And I'm gonna just switch it over to 15 mil. And that's what it's like with the 15 millimeter attachment. So yeah, right now, 15 millimeter attachment, this is how wide it is. You can set it up as a back, you can set it up as a safe back camera uh, for events. You could set it up to track. So let's say the bride is walking down the aisle or something for a wedding, you could have it track her all the way down the aisle. And you could have a nice safety shot with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. So there is a plethora of ways you could use this camera. You could put it on your tripod and fly it like a drone no problem you know like there's i live in the dc washington metro area you are not allowed to fly drones within 15 mile radius of dc but if you want a drone like shot you could put this thing on a monopod and just do like a drone like shot with your dji pocket 3 and again you could set it to track whatever it is you want to keep in the center of the frame and you can monitor it with your phone and mind you, this is where DJI's d size log is slapping Sony all over the face because comparing the cell phone uh, connection between the DJI Pocket 3 and any other Sony camera that can connect to a cell phone, the image quality is a lot crisper on the DJI connection and it is a lot, there's a lot less latency so you could actually use your phone as a legit monitor for your DJI Pocket 3. So, yeah, without a doubt, I mean, you could use this for real estate if you wanted to, get some real estate shots uh, with this, you know, you could roll up into, you could roll up to the real estate shoot and use your DJI Action 3 and do film real estate and make money off it. So there's no doubt in my mind that you can use the Osmo Pocket 3 as a professional camera, mix it in with the rest of your cameras and, you know, you could be filming with your Sony or whatever with 50 mil. You could take your DJI Pocket 3 out of your pocket and just start filming a quick wide angle shot and you're good to go. As you can see, the combo also comes with the DJI Mic 2, which has 32-bit float internal recording. So you could actually use it to have a safety track for 32-bit recording, but at the same time, you could actually record internally without even turning on the Pocket 3 at all and just use the mic as a mic. So now you have like a nice portable mic that came with your Osmo Pocket to use just as a recorder, a sound recorder, if you need to. 32-bit float, you know you're gonna get good audio with that. So that's another plus. And I have a little super windy today. I got these trimmed pubic hairs from the Chinese dude working out of DJI's warehouse in China. You know, the pubic hairs are currently protecting the sound from the wind. So enough of this vlogging here outside in this cold ass weather i'm gonna just go inside my house where it's nice and warm and where my asian penis is actually visible to the naked eye and talk about what it is about this dji pocket 3 that i love so much and that i decided to invest in with my own cash because i'm a trash youtuber and dji doesn't ever send me stuff even though i bought new drone new action cam new all this stuff it's okay See you inside. Now that I'm back in the warmth and comfort of my own house, I can feel below the belt that I am 
truly a man and there's no doubt about it because outside I wasn't sure. <laughs> anyway, so, so clearly this is the DJI Pocket 3 and it's basically just a little one inch um, sensor camera attached to a gimbal and you're able to obviously film and get really stable footage with it because it's a gimbal without losing any quality in the image because it's not cropping in to do any stabilization. And let me also apologize that I'm currently filming in natural light near my kitchen. So the exposure is going to change in and out a little bit and it's going to get annoying, but it is what it is. I'm just working with what I I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to make this quick and easy. I'm actually recording all the audio directly into the DJI Mic 2 that came with the DJI Pocket 3 combo. And I'm gonna just sync it to my Sony ZV-1 in post. So this is a 20 millimeter lens and you could also expand it by attaching this magnetic uh, 15 millimeter like filter or whatever lens on top of it to make it wider. And it could do everything you need, you know? In my opinion, the only thing that's really lacking is something more telephoto, so, which keeps it being, from being like super versatile is, you know, there's no two times zoom type of attachment yet anyway, for you to get maybe even like a 35 millimeter looking shot um, instead of just shooting wide all the time. I understand a lot of people will be using it for vlogging, so a 20 millimeter focal length is great for vlogging and so is a 15. And of course for traveling, you wanna capture everything. So the wide angle lens is gonna help you with that. Just to go over a few things that I like about the camera, I already talked about 10-bit 420 so I can match this camera's footage with the footage of my Sony ZV-1. Um, it has D-Log and again, completely wrecking anything Sony has in the one inch sensor space. Um, it is extremely fast to boot up. So when you have a camera like this, run and gun situations, you just want to be able to film really quick, quick and easy. It's just a matter of flipping the screen up and it boots up within a second, no problem. And you just start filming. The battery life to me is excellent for a camera like this. Not only does this can probably record close to an hour and a half, two hours, just as is, the combo comes with this attachment, which is an additional battery that makes it last even longer and we even connect it to external battery bank, what have you, and be able to record indefinitely so long that it doesn't overheat. And from what I've seen, it doesn't overheat. So this is gonna be a great companion for me when I go do my fishing videos for my fishing channel, et cetera, because again, it tracks. I could just set it on my tripod and then it will just track me wherever I go, no problem. And of course I'll be using my DJ Action 4 as my POV cam on my chest, but I also like to have like a third, um, a third person point of view camera. And this could easily just go on the tripod and I'll just have it track me at wherever it is I'm walking along the shore. Um, and the way I do that, you know, I try to make everything quick and easy for myself. So this is just like the standard non-battery attachment um, for the DJI Pocket 3. And you just connect it like so. Or of course, you could have the battery attachment, which makes it a little bit longer. And then you could just attach it like this. It clips right on. And then so I have an Ulanzi um, travel tripod. It's made of pure carbon fiber. TT, the model is called TT09. Um, and this is pretty much my go-to tripod period for anything if I want to travel light, whether it is I'm doing travel videos or I'm doing fishing videos, whether it is I'm doing corporate videos and even weddings, I could easily take this with me and be confident that even though it's a small tripod, that it will hold my camera no problem. So I could use it on my Sony FX3 ZV-1 with cages and big lens with it, no problem. So I think it's actually a perfect tripod to use if you are planning to buy or if you already own a DJI Pocket 3, because look, you go out and buy like a $30 tripod, $50 tripod, and yeah, it'll work, but it's gonna be cumbersome, it's gonna be cheap, it's gonna break, the wind might blow it over, etc. At least if you spend a decent amount of money, I think this thing is like 250 bucks, you know that you have a tripod that works for like pretty much any camera that you might think about buying in the future. And at least you know spending like 250 bucks on this tripod, you know that you're probably not gonna have to buy another tripod if you wanna use it for any other new cameras that you're gonna buy in the future. 
that is bigger than the DJI Pocket 3. So the way I have it is, look, this is a Falcam F38 um, quick release. And I just installed a Falcam F38 quick release to the bottom of my DJI Pocket 3. And if I wanna connect it to the tripod, it's just like that. Now I'm set to go, it's attached to my tripod. And if I wanna take it out, I just press down and I'm good to go. And this little mount here also fits into like any Arca tripod. So it's not just that you could use the F38 because it's a lot faster and it's locked and you could even lock it again, but it's just quicker to take in and out. And obviously you bought this camera to be quick, do run and gun, get shots that you need. It's a perfect companion. So links are in the description actually for this tripod, the Ulanzi TT09 Video Go tripod. I actually have a promo code, let me show you. And if you order with that promo code through my link, you'll get 10% off this tripod. And this was the tripod that I used to get like some of those fake me out drone shots outside. Again, it's gonna be very useful for guys like me who live in an area where a lot of times you're not allowed to fly a drone. And hey, if you need a quick drone looking shot, this little DJ Pocket 3 is gonna work perfectly for me. Um, you know, and again, I really like this mic. Right now, I have it just recording directly into this mic without using this camera at all. So not only can you use this mic to directly transmit audio and record it onto this camera, but you could also use this as a standalone mic. So for events, whatever, you just you quickly you need like a you need to quickly mic someone up without like thinking about it. With 32 bit flow, you just clip it on, hit record, and you're good to go. I think it has like eight gigabytes of internal storage, so it should get you a pretty decent amount of audio before running out of space. Um, the next thing was something I mentioned was the phone connection. This thing has such a good phone connection. It is so quick and so fast that you could easily just through, you could just connect it to your phone through the Mimo app and it's a fast connection. It's a stable one. And it seems like there's not too much latency compared to like something like the FX3 does with um, the Sony's new phone app. Like honestly, this app here kind of puts the Sony app to shame in terms of connection. Um, you know, since Sony, you are able to like touch screen and do touch tracking and stuff with that um, app, but it's almost useless sometimes because the quality is so bad if you want to actually use your phone to monitor footage. I feel like with the DJI Mimo app, you're going to actually be able to use your phone to monitor footage and feel pretty comfortable about, feel pretty comfortable about it. Like with a camera like this, you could easily like mount it to a car, use it as a car rig, get some cool rolling shots. Um, and you know, you're gonna be able to get, again, 10-bit 420, 4K 60, 4K 120, match it up with your Sony camera. This, this camera could do it all. And it's like so much cheaper than anything else out there. Like if you're a professional videographer, filmmaker, this little camera can easily go into your bag and you could use it for whatever it is that you want to use it for. And you know, you're going to get pretty decent footage with it to match with your more quote unquote high end cameras. And if you're like a beginner or you're just trying to like capture your kids, you're a parent and you just want to capture your kids running around. Like I would buy this way before I even touch any of those Sony like ZV-1, uh, ZV-1 Mark II, um, whatever cameras, because again, this is going to get you better dynamic range, better quality. Again, it's an F2 aperture, but you get 10 bit, you're gonna get um, 4K 60, 420, and of course it's stable. So the footage is gonna be stabilized and you can set it to track and you don't have to sit there and try to like chase your kids around. It could just track your kids for you. So as a beginner, it's an obvious choice. And even as a professional, it's an obvious choice. I mean, anyone doing anything to do with video at all is going to love using this camera. That's pretty much the only real weakness I see with this system is the fact that there's no um, other lens choice other than these wide angles. You know, you can't go 35 mil yet. You can't do 50 mil yet. Um, yeah, and obviously it has better in low light because one inch sensor, but compared to the older ones, but it's still not gonna be like as good in low light as a Sony, you know, FX3 or Sony ZV-1, A7S3 or something like that. So yeah, that is it. I mean, that is my overall like review on this camera. 
like in terms of what you're able to do with it, it's really up to you as the videographer, the shooter, you know, how good it's gonna be. Like really with this camera, nothing really stops you other than yourself. Um, of course, you're not gonna be able to get some storytelling shots uh, that you can get with like a 35 or like 50 millimeter lens, you know, that nice compression and all that stuff. But in terms of anything that requires like wide angle between the range of 15 millimeter to like 24 millimeter, like, the only thing that's stopping you is yourself when it comes to this because it's stabilized, it has 10 bit, 420, 4K60, 4K120. Autofocus tracking the whole nine yards. Like, like what else do you really need to be able to film yourself or whatever? So yeah, that is my take on it. I hope this helped, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you make a de purchase decision on the DJI uh, Pocket 3. Again, this video is not sponsored. This is purchased by myself. I'm not any way affiliated with DJI. I just thought the DJI Pocket 3 was gonna be a good addition to my kit and what I do in terms of my professional work, my stuff on YouTube, social media, etc. So until next time, lighten up. Hey man, you buy the new DJI Action 4 camera? I might uh, replace my GoPro Hero 11. Oh my God, that camera, it Correct, Bro, there's like 6,000 tube douche reviews of the DJ Action 4. The footage looks pretty dang good for an action camera and doesn't overheat. You cannot know if you like the product before you even try it. Are you gay? No, man. How do you know if you never tried it? Let me show you. When I see the guy, my land it like dirt. When I see a girl, my land, it like dirt. Oh my God. That's what I thought. The point is, you can know if you like something or not, even if you haven't tried it. Buy my RGB LGBTQ LED lie, only $29.99.